Hello, welcome back. So in the last episode, we had made it so that we could move around, but there was no animation involved. Uh, you just kind of slide along the surface like this, which is obviously not good. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and add in some animation. The first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you're only using animations from one source. You see how I've got Mech 1, Mech 2, Mech 3, Mech 4, Mech 5, Mech 6? If you mix and match between the different object files, then you need to make sure that all of them are set to humanoid, because if any of them are set to generic, then the import is different and it will malfunction. So I've got these animations, and you can see we've got run and stand. I've done some stupid stuff here uh, trying to get run and stand to work correctly, um, but the problem was that this was set to a generic rig rather than a uh, humanoid rig at the time. So now they should work okay. But I've got... um. Yep, I've got all that stuff working fine, so that should all work. The uh, uh, the other thing we have to do is make sure that the object attached to the player is the same one, and that's not actually quite as necessary, so long as it all works out. But we have to then add the animation, so we have to make sure that this animation is from the correct mech source. So that one will stand, but we also need the run from this animation, which we put here. And we need to be able to transition between them, so there we go. But right now, this just means that we'll stand for a while, then run for a while, then stand for a while. There's no... the transition is when the animation ends, switch over. We need it to be when you're moving forward, switch over. So we're going to add a new parameter called forward. Later on, we're going to do a lot more aggressive um, tweening, uh, blending rather, but for now, this will work. So if the forward is greater than 0.3, then definitely start to run. And if forward is less than 0.2, then start to walk again, or start to stand again. There you go. And you can see that there is some blending in both cases, so that'll, that'll look okay. But right now we don't set this forward at all, so we have to actually set this. And uh, we do that here in the mech controller. So we need to make it so that we have access to the animator. Like that. The mech controller is this file here, and we need to have access to the animator because you can see that the animator isn't on the mech controller object, it's down here on the mech. So that's not a big deal. We just set it up like that. We could also search for it, but why search for it when you can do it like this? Uh, so there we go. Now we have that all set up. The last thing we need to do is we need to set the animator's forward to the vertical to the vertical axis. So we get the vertical axis, which is WS or forward backward, and then we set the animator's parameter with this. Uh, Animator.setFloat is an annoying thing to have to remember, and the other annoying thing is that there's no mirroring, uh, no auto, no no reflection rather. So uh, you have to actually spell this right. Um, if you spell it wrong, I think it'll throw an error at runtime, but it won't warn you here in the compiler. Uh, wham! So you can see that our running animation works. Now we have a kind of annoying uh, hiccup in our run. See that? So what is going on with the annoying hiccup and why do we have it? Uh, another question that's worth asking is why is the mech rotated? And are these things connected? See, as you can see, the mech has skewed 24 degrees off of true, and it's also wandered away from true. So that's probably because our animation isn't... Uh, when we blend animations together, even if our animation has the same exact uh, uh, start and end frame, if it's blended, then those frames are diluted, and we end up with it drifting off true. That's why there's the option in Mechanim uh, to set these bake to bake these in. Uh, now, this is where mechanism starts to get really touchy, and you have to start to really think about whether you actually want to bake them in, and whether that's a good idea, and all that stuff. But in this case, I think we have to bake them in because we're going to be using a lot of really aggressive blending. Now, some elephants came home, and I was trying to pause the game, but whatever. Alright, so now you can see that we run much better. Um, we still have a hiccup in our animation, 
and that's probably due to us actually only having we have an extra frame there I took three takes of this and the first two went off really badly for me but um, there was no noise it was all very quiet the third take technically comes off without a hitch and there's fuck tons of noise it's always how it works all right, so anyhow, the problem with the animation is probably that it's got an extra frame. Since our last frame and our first frame are the same, we really don't need to have this 30-second frame. We only need to have 31 frames, um, which we can just do like that. So let's go ahead and see whether that fixes our little jitter. We'll still have the double foot tap, because I actually wrote that in on accident. But we shouldn't have that shake at the, uh, at the middle of our stride. No, we still have it. Hmm. There might be something fundamentally wrong with the animation I built. Well, anyhow, that's how you do it. And uh, we will, next episode, perhaps do something slightly different. Um, however, now you notice that we're now tilting off to the left. So it might not be... Uh, it might not be Mechadim's animations. Well, maybe we're not tilted. Hmm. We are not much, though. It just looked like we were because it was skewed. That's fine, though. Our camera and our mech body are not necessarily pointed in exactly the same direction, which is something we're going to fix in the next episode. Uh, next episode, we're going to fix up the camera. I don't know. We may fix up the walk cycle first and then fix up the camera, or we might fix up the camera and then the walk cycle. Well, either way, we're making progress.